Have you ever thought about how much water you need in a day? Or how much water the plants in a garden need? Well, most people have to drink at least one and a half liters of water in a day to stay healthy. That's around 10 liters of water in a week. Some plants need even more than that. And for us, going months without water seems impossible. But some plants have adapted to just that. For example, some cacti can survive for months without rain. They thrive in many deserts around the world in hot, dry conditions. Hold on, you say, cacti? Isn't this an orchid channel? Well, yes, that is a huge clue, though, as to what this video will cover next when it comes to orchids. We are going to do a deep dive into cam and which orchids can be considered cam, what it means for those orchids, and why some orchids are cam and others are not. Now, just a little word of warning. The information may sound repetitious, but by the end of the video, you will never forget what cam is, what it does, why and when it happens ever again. There is method to my madness. <laughs> So good to have you on the other side of the intro. I appreciate your interest. I look forward to your comments on the subject of cam orchids. Add everything in greater detail as you see fit because I am going to cover this topic in some detail, but there is so much more geeky information to go into. So if that is your jam and you wish to elaborate, please feel free to do so in the comments. Let's geek out down there a little more. Also, at any given moment in time, please give this video a thumbs up and consider sharing it to anyone you know who might be interested in going deeper when understanding orchid lingo. Okay, so what is CAM? CAM is the abbreviation for Crassulation Acid Metabolism. CAM, for short. Seeing as crassulation acid metabolism is a bit of a mouthful, if you were ever to stumble across an article talking about CAM, after this video, you will be in the know. It is a carbon uptake system utilized by many succulent and cacti plants, as well as orchids. Orchids that use CAM fix carbon dioxide during the night when evapotranspiration is relatively low, storing the carbon dioxide as organic acids. Usually, you will see CAM in connection with succulents and cacti, but we will dive into the orchids that also use CAM because it gives a greater understanding of how those orchids can and do handle conditions that are hot, dry, and considered arid. I am aware that as biologists continue to study photosynthesis in plants, they are learning that more plants than just cacti succulents or some orchids have CAM attributes. For instance, some plants can switch CAM on and off. A few aquatic plants even use CAM photosynthesis. CAM plants are found across the world and demonstrate an important adaptation of plants to their environment when either water or carbon dioxide is in short supply. So what I'm saying here is fluid and not set in stone. Studies are ongoing, as they always are, but we are going to understand CAM enough without waiting for all the variables that will surface in the future. We will address the frequently asked questions right now. Spoiler alert, if humans had CAM adaptation, we wouldn't feel thirst. Now, what is the purpose of crassulation acid metabolism? What can it tell us about our orchids? CAM pathway is adapted in plants to perform photosynthesis under stress. The CAM pathway reduces photorespiration. In CAM orchids, stomata are open at night and they absorb carbon dioxide at night to reduce water loss during the daytime. Even though CAM orchids get their carbon dioxide at night, photosynthesis still needs sunlight and orchids store the carbon dioxide they take in during the night in their cells in the form of a chemical called malic acid. During the day, the malic acid is converted back to carbon dioxide and with the sun shining, the light reactions can create energy and the carbon dioxide can be converted into sugars. This type of photosynthesis is known as crassulation acid metabolism, CAM for short, because of the storage of carbon dioxide at night as an acid. Fabulous little trick of nature and evolution, but why do orchids use CAM photosynthesis? That is, as a response to drought stress. Drought-tolerant orchids maintain water use efficiency by reducing water loss, and one of such water conservation strategies in orchids is through CAM expression, which helps improve carbon gains and water use efficiency. 
Which brings me to my next question. How does cam photosynthesis help an orchid survive? Well, unlike orchids in wetter conditions, cam orchids absorb and store carbon dioxide through open pores in their leaves at night when water is less likely to evaporate. During the day, the stomata stay closed while the plant uses sunlight to convert carbon dioxide into energy, minimizing water loss. There's a pretty obvious question now that follows. I'm going to answer it anyway, which is what is the benefit of the CAM adaptation? I think you pretty much are getting the gist of it now. The most important benefit is the ability to leave most leaf stomata closed during the day. Some orchids are just referenced as CAM orchids, so what is their purpose? The CAM pathway is adapted in the plant to perform photosynthesis under stress. It reduces photorespiration, seeing as CAM orchid stomata are open at night, and they absorb the carbon dioxide at night, specifically to reduce water loss during the daytime. I told you it was going to be a bit repetitive, but I think we are starting to understand this. If there's any confusion, once again, address that in the comments. I'll be more than happy to elaborate. You see, if you're hearing the same words and reasons being repeated, that is intentional because it shows how important the adaptation of CAM pathway is for orchids, how it can protect our orchids when stressed out, as well as we are talking about the opening of some orchid stomata at night, which goes back to a video I did about foliar feeding orchids. When I mentioned some orchids should be foliar fed at a specific time of day, be it at the crack of dawn or just around dusk, that is because of the timing when those orchids open their stomata and the orchids that I suggested that should be foliar fed at dusk or at the crack of dawn, that specific orchid category includes all the orchids that have cam attributes, so cam orchids. Now, we've discussed that, so which orchids are cam orchids that we can count on without going into the category of orchids that can actually switch cam on and off. <laughs> because yes, there's that too, but you know, depending on the condition. However, very rarely in cultivation do those orchids that can switch cam on and off need to, because most of the time we are on top of things when it comes to the care for those orchids, they don't have to flip the cam switch on. However, the most important, most popular cam adapted orchids that we grow in our private collections are cattleyas, epidendrums, dendrobiums, and phalaenopsis. I will break this down so that you can think of your collection and see where this is heading without you considering that orchids with thin leaves fall in the category of cam, and yet in my other video, I mentioned they open their stomata during the day. So just briefly, Here's the breakdown and you will see the pattern emerging very quickly as to why some of the thinner leafed orchids are cam adapted. Some epidendrum species are known to exhibit cam photosynthesis because of their diversity. Not all epidendrums will or have cam, but because of their diversity and the fact that many species live in arid and dry climates, those will have the cam adaptation. Others will be able to switch the cam adaptation on if necessary. Cattleya species, for the most part, all across the board have cam characteristics, especially those that grow in more arid regions. Some dendrobium species, particularly those adapted to drier climates, can exhibit cam photosynthesis. Phalaenopsis species primarily use C3 photosynthesis, but some varieties may exhibit CAM characteristics, especially in response to environmental stress. So it's always good to know where your orchid comes from and see if it has CAM photosynthesis or not. Also, know that if your orchids have gone through a period of stress, your conditions change to drier, you could not water your orchids for an extended period of time, it is this handy dandy part of their evolution throughout millennia that helps them to pull through until until the conditions are favorable again. It is important to note that while cam orchids are adapted to water conserving conditions, many orchids exhibit a mix of photosynthetic pathways depending on environmental factors. The ability to switch between different photosynthetic pathways provides these orchids with flexibility in various growing conditions, and that is why I can grow the same orchid as you, but my conditions may be completely different to yours. Fun fact! If you're still here, you benefit, <laughs> and I thank you for still being here. So, fun fact, once your orchid arrives new into your collection, it is the CAM adaptation that is partly responsible for the lengthy acclimating period your orchid undergoes until it settles into your environment. 
Most of the time your orchid was waiting to be sold in the perfect conditions of a greenhouse and cam will happen as per what is within the DNA of that orchid. However, when that orchid gets moved and shipped to you, then the cam really kicks in because the orchid is conserving energy while it acclimates to your conditions. Even if you have high humidity and all settings are perfect, remember that the orchid needs light to photosynthesize and turn the carbon dioxide stored within its structures as malic acid back into carbon dioxide. So while we acclimate our orchids to our conditions, we don't blast it with full-on light, we let it acclimate with the least amount of stress after its journey. And CAM will determine how well your orchid will acclimate and how quickly. Remember, most orchids that are shipped to us come in boxes and they are pretty dark for several days in a row. The orchid thinks it's nighttime. It arrives with a lot of malic acid in its system. So go gently when you unpack your orchids and don't give it its full potential of light until it has settled in and let Cam start to do the rest. And here's a little more intel because this is your crystal ball when you purchase orchids as to how resilient they are. Do they have the cam adaptation or not? And if not, why? In my Bulbophyllum care video, I focused heavily on altitude and here's where altitude once again comes in handy when understanding cam. Generally, as we now know, cam photosynthesis is more common in orchids that inhabit arid or semi-arid environments. So, the relationship between altitude and cam expression may be a little complex, but not if you take the following into consideration. Higher altitudes and aridity. In some cases, higher altitudes might be associated with arid or semi-arid conditions, and orchids at these altitudes may be more likely to exhibit CAM characteristics as a response to water-saving strategies in drier environments. There are variable conditions. Altitude is often associated with changes in temperature, humidity, and light. Orchids being highly adaptable may express CAM traits in response to these variable conditions just like when you get your orchid freshly shipped and it's acclimating. Then there are the different epiphytic habitats. Many orchids that exhibit CAM characteristics are epiphytes. The altitude can influence the types of host plants available and the microclimatic conditions in these habitats. And then we have altitudinal gradients. Orchid species may show variations in CAM expressions along altitudinal gradients. For example, you might find that a particular orchid species exhibits more pronounced cam traits at higher elevations where environmental conditions favor water conservation. Species-specific adaptations are there as well. The relationship between altitude and cam photosynthesis can vary among different orchid species. Some may be more adapted to higher altitudes with cam attributes, while others may rely on different photosynthetic pathways. I don't know about you, but to be able to have CAM in the DNA is something pretty impressive and it is all part and parcel as to why orchids belong in the survival of the fittest category. Just a little bonus if you've made it this far and thank you for that. The simplest way to break CAM adaptation within orchids down for ease of understanding which orchids are more likely to exhibit CAM. Look at the orchids in your collection and those with thick cuticles, thick leaves, those are your CAM adapted orchids because they open their stomata at night, while the orchids in your collection that have thin cuticles and are less rigid, those will be the orchids that do not exhibit CAM or do not need to switch it on because you're providing for their care. As mentioned, please feel free to elaborate in the comments, ask questions, or just let me know if you have even heard of crassulation acid metabolism in relation to orchids. Let's geek out together over these wonderful creatures as I like to call them. Smart cookies would be another fitting label. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time very much. Wishing you a wonderful day on a single condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.